If you're serious about learning how to make your own characters in 3D using Blender, check out the Gumroad version of this course, which is linked right below. It includes the final fully textured and rigged Love Chan model that we're going to create in this series, downloadable versions of all the videos in this series as they're released, a low poly turnaround drawing that you can sketch your own characters onto, which you can then 3D model using everything you've learned in this series. And it also includes a bonus video series that introduces you to the fundamentals of using Blender with even more content coming soon. To learn more, click the link in the video description below. Now we can click on this Rigify rig and just press H, that's H on your keyboard to hide it because we don't need that right now. Now let's model our character, starting with the feet. So this is, is not actually going to be very difficult. All we need to do is press Shift plus A, then go to the Add menu, Mesh, Cube. Click on Cube and then from there, we are not gonna wanna edit this object in object mode. We actually wanna edit this in edit mode. So to enter edit mode in Blender, just make sure you have your cube selected and then go to the top left of your viewport and click edit mode. Or if you're like me and that's super annoying, you can just press tab. So tab to switch back to object mode and switch to edit mode. Spam tab. <laughs> So when you are in edit mode, which we can see we are in by looking at the top left of our viewport here, there are three different selection modes that you need to be aware of. The default in Blender is this one all the way on the left called vertex select. That's what these little edges on our model are. These are all vertices. So if I click on one and press G, I can move it around like that. All the models we're gonna be making here are going to just be made up of a series of vertices, edges, and faces. That's all you need to worry about. So. That's what a vertex is. It's all these little points on our cube or any 3D model that make up the model, right? There's also this one right here, which is edge select. Edges are exactly what you think they are. They're the edges that make up your model, right? So if I click on this edge right here and then I press G to move it, our entire edge of our cube is moving like so. And I can press right click to cancel that, or I can press G and then left click to confirm that. But I'll undo that right now. And the final selection mode, is right here and this is face select. So every 3D model consists of a series of faces as well and you could think of the face of a 3D model as its surface area almost, right? Uh, that's kind of confusing to describe but it's a lot easier if you just start clicking on your cube here and you're like, oh, it's, it's literally just like every face of my cube. Every side of my cube is a face, right? So you can click on these, you can press G to move them, press R to rotate them, like so. There are going to be reasons to use all three of these constantly. Sometimes you just wanna move one vertice, sometimes you just wanna move an edge along an axis or something like that, and sometimes you just wanna shift select multiple edges and move a bunch of them. There's a ton of reasons to use all three of these. You're gonna be switching between them constantly, so understanding what they are and how they work is super important. That is the very, very short version. <laughs> But yeah, let's get into modeling. So you might have noticed when we have our cube selected and we press tab to go into edit mode like so, if we switch between edit and object mode, we're gonna see that a bunch of new options appear here. And if you don't see these names, just make sure to drag this little section out. You can see if I drag this all the way to the left, it becomes abbreviated, which we don't want. So hold left click and just drag this out so you can see the full list of names here. So when we're in edit mode, there's a bunch of operators in here that are just used for modeling specifically, right? For this series though, we only really care about four of these options. One is our default, which is selection box. That's just how we select things. That's our default for a reason, it's very useful. And we can switch between the different selection modes by pressing W. So there's also select circle you can see there. There's a selection lasso, which will do this if you hold left click. And there's also a tweak, but personally, I always use box because I like being able to hold left click and have that option available to me. The other ones we care about are going to be extrude region, bevel, and loop cut. So let me show you what loop cut does first, right? So if we click on loop cut, you're going to see that we can't select our object. Like we can't select faces, we can't select vertices, we can't select edges like we used to, right? That is because we're using one of these tools in this section. And the way that loop cut works is, is it lets you create an edge loop around your model. So if I press left click here, you're gonna see it creates an edge loop on the top of our cube. I can undo that with control Z. And if I press and hold left click here, it's gonna create an edge loop on the side of our model. So an edge loop is literally, it's what it sounds like. It's a loop of edges that kind of wrap around your model in a quote unquote circle and they're connected to each other. So I'm gonna undo that by pressing Control Z. Then I'm gonna go to our next tool here, which is bevel. 
But before I use bevel, I'm actually going to press W so I go back to my selection box, making sure I'm on face select. Then I'm going to click on this face here. Now, if I press bevel, you're going to see that there's this little circle icon that appears, right? If I hold left click on the circle icon, you're going to see that our faces here become beveled. So this is really good if you want your model to catch a highlight. So if you're modeling like a crate or something like that, but you'll see when we start modeling Love Chan here that her torso is actually kind of just a beveled cube. Notice how this part in the top is beveled, this part in the bottom is beveled. It's kind of just a cube shape that we kind of reshape into a torso, right? So this tool is super useful both for hard surface modeling, but also for modeling characters like this. And the last tool I want to talk about is extrude region. So I'm going to press W to go back to face select here. Then I'm going to click on this face. I'll click on the top face of this cube, actually. Then I'll click on extrude region. And what this does is by holding left click, we are creating a new set of faces here, right? So if I hold left click and move this up, we have made a new set of faces on our model here. So I'm going to show you what what happened if we didn't do that by pressing control Z and then just pressing G to move this. See, if we just move this, we're not actually creating a new set of faces. We're just modifying the existing ones. But by using extrude region, we can extrude from our existing mesh a new part of the mesh, right? So this is super useful if we want to continue our mesh. We'll probably use this on her arms, maybe her hair, for example. It's just a really useful tool to have. But yeah, I'm gonna undo that with control Z. So we just have a cube here, and now let's get to modeling the foot. Uh, because we've already made these front and side views, all we need to do is kind of model and line up our cube to match the foot in our front view and side view, right? So to do that, I'm going to select, make sure I'm in edit mode first of all, not object mode. We want to do all of our editing of this in edit mode. So I'm going to scale this down by pressing S, scale that on down. Then I'm going to go to the front orthographic view by pressing one on my numpad. I can also do that right here if I want to. Now I actually want to see my reference behind my cube or in front of my cube. I want my cube to be transparent. That's the word I'm trying to say. <laughs> um, and to do that, you can just click right here to do this toggle x-ray button. The shortcut for that is Alt Z, by the way. So I'm going to click on that right now. Now we're just going to try to line this up with the right side of her. Um, we only need to model the right side of her for now. We don't need to worry about the left because we are just going to mirror all of these and save ourselves a ton of work later on. So I'm going to make sure I'm in vertex select by going up here to a vertex selection. Then I'm going to box select these vertices and then press G plus X so that it lines up perfectly here. I'm going to drag, select, box, select these vertices, press G plus X, and kind of just line this up. Box select these top two, press G plus Z, like so. Then I'm gonna go to the side view by clicking up right here, which I could also do numpad three. Now I'm gonna do something a little weird. I'm gonna box select these vertices, press G plus Y, move these over, like so. So it's actually fallen off the side a little bit there. And I'll box select these vertices, and press G plus Y, and move them to the front here. Now, remember that loop cut tool we just used? We're gonna use it immediately. So I'm gonna click on loop cut here, then I'm gonna hover over my cube until this little yellow line appears, you can see it there. Then I'm gonna hold left click and move it down to this line on our shoe here. Then I'm gonna go back to select box, select both of these verts. Vert is just short for vertice, by the way. Then I'm going to, actually, I'll just select it one by one. I'll select these vertices right here, press G plus Y. Then I'll select these vertices right here, box select these vertices right here, press G plus Y. And keep in mind I'm box selecting for a reason, because if I just clicked on one of these vertices, I'd only be selecting one of two, because remember, go to front view here, this is a box. That's not one vertice we're moving when we're doing this. We're moving two vertices, so it's important to box select so you actually get all of them. Um, so yeah, still not lining up though, and to fix that, we will once again use loop cut. So I'm going to once again hover over my model until that little yellow line appears. Then I'm going to press left click. Then I'll go back to my select box by pressing W. And I'll left click and drag over this vert, press G plus Y, move it in. Hold left click on this vert, press G plus Y, 
and move it in. And I'll hold left click on these verts, press G plus Y, and move them in. Then I'll go back to my front view just to make sure things are looking good on the Y axis. And we can see that I drew the shoe kind of at an angle like this. I don't think that actually looked good in 3D. <laughs> like if I try to recreate that here, I could, but it didn't look very great. So I'm just gonna leave this perfectly upright right there in the front view. I'm fine with that. Um, then I'm gonna middle mouse out of our view here. Then I'll turn off X-ray by clicking this little button at the top right of our viewport here. And we have modeled our shoe. We are now ready to start modeling the legs. And this is actually super, super simple. So all we need to do to model the leg is press Shift plus A, go to the mesh menu here, and click on cylinder. Now, your cylinder is not gonna look like this. It's going to look something like uh, this when you spawn it in. Um, the reason why that is the case is because Blender has an add menu. And by default, when you spawn in a cylinder to Blender, it's gonna have, I think, 25 vertices and a cap fill type of n-gon or triangle fan, which just is telling Blender, hey, do you wanna fill in the top and bottom of the cylinder with verts or faces or anything like that? Um, and for our purposes here, we actually don't want that. So we're gonna set the cap fill type. So if after you spawn in your cylinder, just make sure to expand this, then click on cap fill type and set this to nothing. And for our verts here, we only want five verts because this is a super low poly model, right? We're gonna click on vertices and press five and then enter. That is our super chunky leg, which is perfect. So now I'm just gonna press tab, go to the front view here and just scale this down with S, move it with G, scale it down with S, and we're gonna go to X-ray once again by pressing Alt-Z or clicking this button at the top right of our viewport. Then we're gonna move this G, gonna scale it with G, uh, excuse me, with uh, S plus Z. So it's kind of lines up there, but it doesn't need to be perfect because now we're just gonna grab verts. So I'm gonna box select these bottom verts, G plus Z to move them up. Then I'll scale them with S plus X. Then I'll move them with G plus X. And this does not need to be perfect. Do not worry about getting this perfect at all. G plus, or excuse me, S plus X. Scale them along the x-axis, perfect. Then I'm gonna select these ones at the top here, press S plus X, scale them up a bit. G plus Z to move them up. We actually want them to be slightly over the shorts here. So kind of moving a little bit beyond the shorts. Then I'm gonna see what this is looking like in the right view. So I'm gonna to go to the right view by pressing this little X button right here, or I could have just pressed numpad three. Now, you're gonna see that this doesn't quite line up in the side view, and we gotta fix that. So box select these bottom verts right here, and then I'll press G plus Y to move them, then G, or excuse me, S plus Y to scale them down, then G plus Y to move them. Go to the top, box select S plus Y to scale them up, then G plus Y to move them over, like so. That is good enough. Now we can see that there's this little like divot in the leg right here that we don't have enough geometry to represent. So to fix that, we're going to make a loop cut in the middle of the leg. So we're gonna click on the loop cut tool, hover on over our model until that little yellow line appears that hold left mouse and kind of release left mouse right here with this little divot kind of hits its peak. Then we're gonna go back to the select box tool by pressing W. Then I'm going to box select these two vertices right here and I'll press G plus Y to move them in like so. Now we're gonna go double check our front view. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna press Control S to save, constantly be saving. And I'm gonna middle on us out of this view. And I'll turn off X-ray by going to the top right of my viewport and clicking this or just pressing Alt-Z. And you're gonna see that our leg is now done. Congratulations on getting this far. You've already learned how to import 2D references, the fundamentals and tools of 3D modeling in Blender, plus you've already modeled the legs. In the very next video, we're going to model the waist and more, but in the meantime, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to make sure you don't miss out on any tutorials we upload. And if you're serious about learning how to make your own characters in Blender, make sure to check out the Gumroad version of this course, which is linked in the top of the description box below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.